Tell me, what does democracy look like? It can be hard to see sometimes that an idea, a voice, a vote can make a difference. Each of us has the power to turn a moment into a movement. This is what democracy looks like. It's the power to dream of new solutions. The power to look at the world and say, we can make it better. The power to challenge outdated beliefs and right current wrongs. It's music and marches and murals to memorialize and move us forward. The power to use our voices, our platforms, our passion. The power to organize and protest and demand change. The power to be unafraid. Tell me what democracy looks like.
Hello and happy Wednesday. Welcome to episode nine of Politics and Flow's Big Ideas Edition. Uh, today, is our special guest is Sharice Davids. Um, but before we get going, I want to offer a little bit of context because I would be remiss if I did not offer tribute to the late, the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And as her body lies in repose in the Supreme Court today and will lie in state in the Capitol later this week, we're reminded of how precious this gift of life is and humbled by the power of one individual to contribute and impact the lives of millions. You know, and as Senate Republicans and President Trump demonstrate their devotion to partisan ideology over and above the needs of country, you know, seeking to rush a new justice when they haven't even done anything on the HEROES Act, you know, this is pathetic and infuriating, but what it should teach us is two things. One is that we don't have to go quietly, like just because this is their plan doesn't mean that we have to like lay and wait for that to happen. You know, that's what dissent is about. And, you know, just as a segue, like Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's life was all about passionate dissent. So, you know, the majority doesn't always get things right. And in order for things to change, we, the people, the silent majority have got to go from silent majority to more vocal majority. You know, this is the seed that we've been waiting and hoping for leading up to the moment we've all been waiting for, the chance to reimagine our country through the election. So we can't, ne we can't necessarily get so lost in despair that we forget the work that we have at hand. Right, you know, move on is organizing petitions and encouraging Senate Democrats to stay stay the course with fighting against this um, Republican sham job, but also demanding the Senate Republicans do their honor the dying wish of Justice Ginsburg and not vote a Supreme Court justice in before the election. And again, th if this is something they choose to move forward with, we must make them pay the price. Right. So anyway, not anyway, but in, 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 in addition, yesterday was National Voter Registration Day. And this is happening that that this is happening in the middle of this latest political season is very powerful. Because if we don't like what we see from our government, as a government, especially in the Senate, we must change it. And it's our job as citizens to change it. You know, Move On has several campaigns, as you know, like mobilized to win and vote tripling. And if you want to get involved in vote tripling, because what we're trying to do is remind people that you can either in the next 40 days or 42 days or whatever it is, vote by mail, drop off your ballot in person, vote early in person, or vote at the polls on election day. So all of these options are available to you. Um, check out moveon.org slash mobilize to win for more information on these efforts and to sign up to receive communications um, ahead of election day via email and text message. And so text we got us to 668366 to get involved in the voter mobilization efforts. So without further delay, it's my honor to begin to introduce our, our guest of honor today, Rep Representative Sharice Davids. You know, Sharice was raised by a single mother who served in the Army for 20 years. And after graduating from Leavenworth High School, shout out to Kansas, she worked her way through Johnson County Community College and the University of Missouri, Kansas City, before earning a law degree from Cornell Law School. And as a first generation college student, shout out to first gen college students, I'm also one. She worked her entire time in college, so she understands the importance of quality public schools and affordable higher education. And it's that foundation that allowed her to go on to a successful career focused on economic and community development, which included time as a White House fellow under President Barack Obama. When she was sworn in to the 116th Congress, Re Representative Davids became one of the first two Native American women serving in Congress, along with Dear Deb Holland. Rep. Davids has centered her work in office on putting Kansans first, fighting the limited influence of special interests on our process, and to make health care more affordable and accessible to everyone. And I'll also offer that I met uh, Sharice in the intervening period between the 115th and 116th Congress. And, you know, I don't see my loved ones as much as I'd like to, but, you know, we all started our, our jobs together at the same time. And she's one of a few folks that I text regularly just saying, hey, how you doing? How are you holding up? Um, and it's an honor to be able to see her in this forum. So without further ado, um, Sharice, welcome to Politics and Flow's Big Ideas. How are you today? I'm doing good. Thank you for uh, inviting me. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to our conversation. And also, thank you for, you, you really do, you check on folks, you check in on folks to make sure everybody's holding up okay. And it's always appreciated. Indeed. Uh, so before I do anything, I've been waiting to tell you this in person, like congrats to the Chiefs, right? So I'm, 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 a, bit, I'm a bit late on this, but I've been wanting to say that to you. Congratulations for the Chiefs. And, you know, how are you today? My first question is, do you have any reflections on the passing of uh, Justice Ginsburg? Um, well, I mean, I think there's, of course, the uh, the way that 
uh, I feel personally, I mean, I'm heartbroken about us losing uh, Justice Ginsburg. Um, and as a, a woman and a, a lawyer, uh, yeah. as somebody who, um, you know, is now a part of this whole process, and I think a lot of folks uh, have been reflecting on Justice Ginsburg's life and her opinions and all of this uh, sort of thing. And uh, she had a lot of respect for the Congress and for the separation of, of powers and um, and for the Constitution. And so uh, so there's the the feelings and emotions that I think are really raw still for a lot of folks. Yeah, I know they right. are for me. And then, um, you know, and then there's the, the piece of it that I know a lot of folks are also worried about, which is the uh, the, the vacancy uh, that we're now seeing the, um, you know, there's there's definitely uh, a lot of butting heads that's going to be happening. And so I'm uh, I, I, I do think that, you know, we need to wait to fill that vacancy. Um, and so did she. <laughs> right. And um, so I appreciate that. And, you know, Speaking of history, you know, Justice Bader Ginsburg was very historic, and this the 116th Congress has been very historic as well. You know, your class had the first two Native American women. Um, you know, Ayanna Presley was the first. Um, I mean, if I, if I were to count the first, it would just be amazing, um, and it might take up the rest of our time, but it's been very historic. And though, you know, what are my, my question for you is twofold. So, one, what has been your favorite moment of this history? But what's been of, of all the historic things that have happened in this Congress? What has been your favorite? Um, and what has been the thing that has most challenged you, but you've also learned from? Um, I'm glad we're starting with something positive here because Absolutely. I do think I mean, I think a lot of people are just feeling uh, overwhelmed and uh, and a lot of anxiety and um so I, I'm, I'm glad we're starting with something positive. You know, uh, it's hard to, it's actually hard to pick one specific thing, but I will say that, okay, three. Um, I will <laughs> say that, uh, you know, first of all, we had the opportunity, we've had the opportunity to pass uh, so many uh, great pieces of legislation out of the House. Uh, you know, the, the frustration comes when we see that the Senate continues to, uh, block really good legislation by not even voting for it, um, yeah. not even coming to the table and having the conversation, uh, have have people vote and we can see where they're at so that we can really start to have a conversation about how to uh, how we get to uh, how we get to that progress. But um, that's one piece of it is just knowing that we have been able to pass some really powerful pieces of legislation out of the House. Uh, the uh, the first bill, H.R. 1, the For the People Act, you know, trying to get big money out of politics, trying to make sure that that people's voices are uh, are, are not drowned out in our democracy uh, by the wealthiest uh, corporations and special interests, uh, all the way through to making sure. I mean, the For the People Act was a, a broad sweeping landmark piece of legislation. Uh, making sure that people can actually cast a ballot, that they can register, cast their ballot. And then if something, uh, if they uh, are being disenfranchised in some way, that they have recourse to address that. Um, you know, we've passed uh, tomorrow. Everybody will be wearing, uh, a lot of people are going to be wearing orange face masks to uh, signify the year that's gone by since we passed the background checks um, bill. You know, I think that uh, looking at the murdered and missing indigenous women uh, efforts that I've been able to participate with uh, Congressman Holland, um, looking at the Violence Against Women Act, looking at the Equality Act. Uh, there are so many pieces of legislation, uh, the Dream and Promise Act that we've been able to pass, uh, the Justice and Policing Act. I mean, I think that uh, it, it is. it feels really good to know that there are a ton of people uh, working in this chamber to push forward on the issues that are the most important to uh, to our constituency, to the uh, to the country. Right, and what I'll would... stop there because otherwise we would spend the whole time, <laughs> um, you know. Right. 
and you raise a lot of things and one of the blessings of my job is that i've been able to like be around y'all as these things have passed and we've done our best with the senate but you know that's why again like so rather than throw our hands up in despair what we need to do in this moment is like register more voters like keep keep people like Sharice in office like do use our powers and the things that we have at our disposal so government may not be with us all the time but we need to make sure that if they don't do it that we, we hold them accountable so you know the name of this is the big idea series and you know the idea that you wanted to share about in our forum is equity and transportation so two things that we don't typically hear um in conjunction so please tell me like how investing in transportation can create equity and opportunity for all communities and what does that mean for you individually and collectively so so tell us a little bit about equity and transportation individually collectively and how that works for you yeah well i'm really glad we're getting the chance to talk about this because it is um you know, I, in my bio, you mentioned that I was a uh, uh, had the opportunity to serve as a White House fellow. Uh, so yeah. I spent my I spent a year out here in D.C. I spent my day to day at the Department of Transportation, and uh, I always tell people that I left that experience as a uh, born again transportation enthusiast. <laughs> and I say that because, uh, like a lot of people, I I didn't spend a lot of time just like digging in and really learning about infrastructure and transportation policy and the ways that it impacts us. And uh, But once you stop and think about the ways that uh, transportation and infrastructure policy impact every aspect of our lives, I mean, we're talking about, well, so right now we're in the middle of a public health crisis. Yeah. Uh, one of the top things that they tell folks to do is wash your hands. Wash your hands as uh, regularly as possible for at least 20 seconds. Uh, you have to have clean water to do that. That's infrastructure. You know, when we talk about getting uh, to our places of work, getting to our places of uh, uh, accessing health care, education, uh, re recreation and, and faith. I mean, there are every single thing that we do is connected by our infrastructure. And uh, you can have whole communities with more access to opportunities or transportation and infrastructure policy can cut people off from opportunities. And we've seen that happen both intentionally and unintentionally throughout, um, you know, especially the last, right now we're, we're, I mean, we're driving around on infrastructure and making use of infrastructure that our uh, grandparents built. Uh, this is an opportunity by like being very intentional about making sure that, that principles of equity are built into our transportation and infrastructure right now that our grandchildren and great-grandchildren can see those opportunities and have a, a, a life where they can thrive. Yeah, I love, I love that you mentioned that it's our, basically, for, in terms of infrastructure, it's our chance to pay it forward and reimagine what's happening because the roads that we are on now were paved in like Eisenhower's days, right? Especially the, some of the interstates, right? At least the idea of the interstate is from the 50s, right? So surely transportation is, it has become more innovative since then, and so I, I love the way that you frame that. Um, so tell us a little bit more about Kansas Three, right? So we've had we've had three people on here from Texas. So people don't think about progressive values um, winning in places like Texas and Kansas. So tell me a little bit more about Kansas Three and what you love most about the district. Yeah. So uh, the third district in Kansas is uh, in the Kansas City metro area. So uh, for anybody who's watching, if you haven't been there, come visit us uh, when we do that sort of thing again. Um, <laughs> and because uh, I'd love for uh, for I love for people to get the chance to see uh, the community that I really feel like I've had an opportunity to, to thrive in. Uh, what I was talking about earlier, thriving, you know, uh, I had I got to go to some pretty great public uh, education institutions from the high school that I graduated to, to the community college that I graduated from. Um, you know, I think that, uh, the, the district is, um, it's really interesting because we have a little bit of everything. So mm -hmm. we have uh, a pretty solid suburban, uh, a, a pretty solid suburban County, Johnson County. And then we've got Wyandotte County, uh, which is, uh, where Kansas City, Kansas is. Um, I know a lot of folks sometimes are like, wait, there's a Kansas City, Kansas. Um, so it's where Kansas City, Kansas is. And, you know, KCK has its own uh, unique history and culture and um, a vibrancy. And then uh, and then we have a small portion of Miami County, which is 
kind of, it starts to get more rural. There's a little more ag uh, once you start getting into that part of, uh, of the district and into the state. And so we really have to figure out ways to make sure that everybody is connected, that everybody is heard, that everybody is part of this process of, you know, bringing the issues and concerns of, uh, of the third district out here to Washington, D.C. And um, so it's, a, it's an interesting uh, area that has really a, a little bit of everything in it. And so what would you say gives you hope about, you know, and, and thank you for saying that the questions that I offer are positive because that that's done with intention. Like you don't need my help to tell you that things are terrible. Like for some folks, my job is to uplift things that are inspirational. So I, I want to like begin to close like our time together. So at, uh, what gives you hope in this moment, right? With so many things that seem to be weighing down on us, what personally gives you hope in this moment? That's a really great, um, a really great question. You know, uh, it changes, but only a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. uh, as as I've been doing this, I remember. You know, I got sworn into a shutdown government. Exactly. Um, you know this. We've had yeah. we had conversations about it actually right at the very beginning. Yeah. Um, and I remember it was not that long after I got out here, and I was meeting with people and. And folks were telling me about an issue that they face, surprise medical billing, like there's all these different things that people are dealing with in the day to day prescription drug costs. And I remember I remember thinking I get to meet with people every single day who are trying to make things better for other people. Mm -hmm. um, and and then. In the summertime, I started going to uh, uh, graduations and I was talking to a lot of young people, like college students, and I was thinking, here's all these young people who see a future for themselves in this country and they're trying to do, they're trying to figure out uh, how, to, how to formulate what that future will look like. And I think we're seeing a lot of that right now from the people who are getting engaged in elections to the mm -hmm. people who are getting engaged in other community uh, community activism and community engagement. We have so many people who are out there right now saying, uh, here's the piece that I don't, that, that I'm, I'm not satisfied with. And here's what I'm going to do to make a difference. Here's what I'm going to do to make the future that I want to see for this country. And seeing that many people recognizing a future for themselves in this, uh, in this time in history, that to me is, it's it like, it gets me excited. It gets it gives me optimism. It gives me hope um, to see so many people because I think I think uh, I, I think there are a lot of people with um, sure fears and anxieties, but the way they're expressing that is through action, running for office, getting registered to vote, getting other people registered to vote. Uh, you know, these are all things that that give me hope. Yeah, I appreciate that. And so as as we wind down, I want to do two things. One is that. You probably are on your phone and on your computer a lot, right? So your hands are a lot like this, right? So clasp them together for me, bring your fingers together, and just make wrist circles. So what this does is Can remind you your wrist tracking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's actually like reimagining the wrist. So giving it its motion range of motion back. So switch that up. So if you ever find that you're texting too much or typing too much, give yourself 30 seconds of this, and then you like give the fingers like a little wiggle after this. So, so that's your hand yoga, right? Mm -hmm. So next time you feel like you're a little Tyrannosaurus Rex wannabe, like give yourself one of those, and then it just it, it balances out all the imbalances that we put together in the hands, right? So I just wanted to share that with okay. you because uh, the okay. yoga teacher in me has to do that. So in conclusion, where can people find more about your campaign and how to support you? Tell us where, t tell us yeah. where and how to do that. Well, so my website's uh, shariceforcongress.com. And then I'm on Instagram. Uh, there I'm, she is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm on Instagram. And I'm Sharice for Congress on Instagram. Uh, Rep Davids as well. Uh, and then on Twitter, Sharice Davids on Twitter. And... Uh, yeah, please reach out and uh, give us a follow. Uh, my website has our um, uh, we have a merchandise store. We can, um, you know, buy a baseball cap if you want. 
<laughs> well, Sharice, I, I love I love that we got a chance to connect, and I want to thank you and Joanna and everyone on your staff who made this possible. Or Johanna, if I said your name wrong, please forgive me. And um, we will do all we can to support you and are encouraging others to do the same, not only in district but nationwide. So I know you got to go. So thank you for being here. Yeah, Blessings and all you. best wishes. And um, however, I can, however I can be supportive, let me know. You got my number. I appreciate it. And thank you for all the work you're doing um, and for uh, just really for all the work you're doing and for being you. I appreciate you. Blessings to you. See you soon. See you soon. So everyone, we, before we transition to the flow section of the live stream, which is a 13 minute practice that I've shared with many of my students um, in order to bring balance to the body, um, it just brings about so what we just did with Charisse, like it's it's more of like opening the heart and opening the wrist and those sorts of things for hours of being on on the computer. So, you know, I want us to con consider the following. You know, whether it be because we wind down to the the wind down to the election and the emotions that have surf and or the emotions that have surfaced with the passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you know, things that makes things a bit more amplified, right? So whether or not you make time for the practice on the other, other side of the stream, it'll be good for you if you do. But if not, let's close this entire episode, which has been beautiful. So short but sweet. Thank you. Um, let's take two deep breaths and then end with a moment of silence for Justice Ginsburg, right? So take a deep, well, find your best seat, shoulders back and down. Two deep breaths. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. <sighs> Just let, let it all out, right? Deep inhale, exhale. Now a moment of silence for Justice Ginsburg. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for observing the moment of silence. Blessings and best wishes to all. Politics and Flows, Big Ideas, Episode 9, over and out. Blessings and best wishes. Reggie Hubbard here again from Active Peace Yoga. Blessing, blessed to be here with you again um, on the Kim Show Health Network. And um, happy to extend where we began last week. So if you remember last week, if you saw what, what I did last Wednesday, I was outside in the sun and the air uh, and the breeze, barefoot, focusing on the breath. The breath is the key to life. The breath is the key, key to wellness. And as we discussed last week, for though many of us, the breath is an indicator of how we're feeling. So if we have short breath, we usually have hunched shoulders and a lot of tension deeper breath, more expanded consciousness, more expanded relaxation. And those key indicators are correlative to functions of the nervous system. Not all the functions, but the primary function uh, would be fight or flight, um, which is indicative of a short breath, um, which is the sympathetic nervous system. A deeper breath is correlative to health, rest, and digest the parasympathetic nervous system. So last week we did a lot of counting of the breath, taking the deepest breath of the day. And hopefully by the end of that practice, you felt a lot more peaceful, a lot more at ease, a lot more grounded um, through nothing else other than deepening the breath. Sometimes in yoga and meditation, we get all caught up in flowery, prosaic terms, or in the asana practice, we get caught up in the gymnastics, or I would even say histrionics of contortionism as opposed to being rooted in the reality that the way that we treat the body therapeutically is the goal of asana. The goal of asana is to align the body and to alleviate and relieve tension and tightness and sickness and toxicity in the physical form so that we can, better, we can be better able to be of service to spiritual aims. So without further ado, we talked about the breath last week. Let's take that one step further. So breath with movement. And the movements we're going to do are basic, and this is a uh, facsimile or a copy of um, some of the more basic practices I do in my beginner Hatha classes. But I think these are practices that all of us can use in general in a computerized workflow um, and in a digitized lifestyle. We're on these computers, so this is our default position. So look, does, does this look healthy? If you said yes, 
yikes. But no, this doesn't look healthy. Like the, the, the hands have full range of motion. The wrists are supposed to go like this, not like this, right? And look at my, look at my spine, right? So if we're like this, yikes, like what does that mean for the posture? So we're gonna do basic movements of the wrists, of the fingers, and do some neck circles um, and accompanying with a deep breath like we began last week. So I want you to find a tall seat. And as you see, I'm in a chair, right? So this doesn't have to be rocket science. You can use the resources you have available to you. So for those of you who are seated for hours, um, rather than be like this in a Zoom call that you can't stand, you can implement some of these practices to offer therapy to the physical form while doing the task that you have before you on your computer. So tall spine, right? The shoulders back and down. I want to do shoulder circles here. Get into the breath and work out the tension in the shoulders. The shoulders are usually like this. Let that go back and down and reinforce that through the movement of the shoulders and the deepening of the breath. Pause. Take notice of how the body felt doing that, and then take them forward a little bit more subtlety and nuance. Getting into the full range of motion in the shoulder. Pause. Beginning to loosen up the shoulders from being like this all day. So now that we have a little bit of flexibility and sass in the shoulders, bring hands together, clasp fingers together, and then begin to make wrist circles here. Deepen the breath or maybe even close the gaze or soften, soften the gaze or close the eyes altogether. Luxuriating in the full range of motion in the wrist because A, when was the last time you did this? And B, just remember that the wrist is a full circle joint. Take those wrist circles in the other direction. The wrist is designed to do this. So maybe three or four more circles here. Then we'll pause for a second. So pause, shake that out. And so if the wrists are designed to go in full circle motion and all we do is this, that's like running a marathon in high heel shoes. There's no shade if that's what you want to do, but high heel shoes are designed for that. Tennis shoes, like athletic shoes are designed for that. So like using the joint, for the way it was designed and, and using it therapeutically in that way, yield peace and relaxation in the body, right? So we got into the shoulders, we got into the wrists. Now maybe make a little wave. So why are we doing this? Because stress and tension in the fingers and the wrists manifest in the shoulders. So if we work on the ecosystem and take that in the other way, yes, this looks crazy, but all of that tension in the shoulders and the hands, we're working that out, right? So instead of being like this for hours, we're introducing motion into the upper body, right? So work that out however you need to. Feel how that feels in the arms and shoulders. Now take those fingers, press them out and up. On the inhale, bow the spine, navel the spine, exhale. Inhale up, exhale down. Four more. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Final. Inhale up. Stay. Press up with the hands, root down in the seat, shoulders back and down. Soften the face. Four breaths like we did last week. Inhale. Deepest inhale of the day. Pause. Exhale up the mouth. Three more times. Inhale. Pause. Exhale. Twice. Inhale. Pause. Exhale. Last. Inhale. Pause. Exhale, lower hands down. What I didn't know I was doing was sneaking a finger stretch. So now, as if you were counting how excited on a scale of one to a million, 
the answer is a million, so you have a minute to do a million, right? Make this motion with the hands. So we just stretch the fingers out for like this for hours. Feel how liberated that feels to have done that stretch and then just get into the motion of the hands. As we, as we begin to conclude this, take those newly nimble fingers and begin to tap the space. Get on the jawline, get on the brow line, top of the head, behind the head, jaw. So why? Again, if we're like this for hours, we squint. So look at this, this looks stressful and crazy. So we've loosened all of this up. Let's get into the face. Behind the head, the neck, back of the neck. Now, pause, shoulders back and down. Take chin to chest. Draw half circles on the collarbone. Next time, right ears towards right shoulder, keep it there. Right fingers outside of left temple. Choose your magic. So maybe you tap here. Maybe you use piano fingers. Maybe you use tactile pressure before breath to open the side of the neck. Inhale through the nose. Pause. Exhale up the nose. Inhale. Exhale two. In and out of the nose, please. Inhale. Exhale three. Inhale. Exhale four. Gently release right fingers. Take chin through center, left ear towards left shoulder. Left pink, left fingers outside of right temple. Now again, choose your magic. Either tap, tactile pressure, or piano fingers. Get into opening the right side of the neck. Whatever way works for you. Keep navel to spine core and gaze shoulders back and down. Four breaths here. Let right arm dangle. Breathe. Inhale through the nose. Exhale up the nose. Inhale. Exhale two. Inhale. Exhale three. Inhale. Exhale four. Release left fingers. Come through center. Head level. Shoulders back and down. Place backs of hands on the knees. Show me your heart. Let's close by pausing. Take notice of how the shoulders feel. How do the wrists and fingers feel? How does the neck feel? How does the face and head feel? Dear ones, that was about seven minutes, right? So those basic tools can take care of you from the here, from, from the heart up. And since we're, since we're like this all the time, notice how liberated you feel. Notice how open you are in the chest, how expansive you are in lung capacity how free you are in the wrists and hands, how liberated you are in the neck and face. Seven minutes, not too bad, huh? So backs of hands on the knees, palms up to receive, shoulders back and down, navel to spine, core engaged. Four breaths to close. Inhale through the nose. Pause. Exhale out the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Pause. Exhale out the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Pause. Exhale out the mouth. Final. Inhale through the nose. Pause. Exhale out the mouth. Bring hands to heart center. 
exposing this moment with reverence and precision, seeing how we feel from top of head through heart center. If this has made you any lighter, any more relaxed, any more liberated, healthy, and free, it has been an honor to lead you through these basic practices. So love and grace, Reggie Hubbard here from Active Peace Yoga. Have a beautiful day. Peace out.